Welcome back, everyone, to the LCS Challengers League Summer Promotion. Our final qualifier match now underway, and it's Blue Otter who took game number one. And Josh, what we felt like was a very must-win scenario with how many power picks Lady Sports were able to get. Yeah, because remember, we are playing the Fearless Draft. If you play a champion, you cannot play it again during the rest of that series. And in a best of five, that will cut into players' champion pools a lot. You need to be able to play at least six champions, and depending on your role, maybe a lot more than that based on all the champions that will be disappearing. So it does put a huge dent in what it is that Lit Esports are trying to do this series. And I, I didn't really see a whole lot. I feel as though Messages was the best player on the esports, at least in game one. And that puts them in a really awkward situation because the early game was so quiet, nobody got off the ground. I mean, for the most part, it was just Sammy Kin and Messages staying relatively neutral with each other. And then Messages having to show up in a lot of these mid-game neutral fights, which... I mean, there was one fight that really did turn for Lid Esports, but it's going to take much more than that. And, of course, it's going to take not fumbling a lot of these early laning situations in the bottom lane where we saw Lynx start to pop off. I mean, it was Rock Boom with three deaths at 10 minutes, Josh. And a lot of them were kind of his own fault, right? You kind of look at what the position yeah, was like true. in the laning phase, and those are situations that will not be acceptable later on. And so it does feel as though we just need to see Lit Esports kind of tighten up everything uh, across the board, and maybe they can come back. But we already heard that the morale was not that strong to start with on this team, and I can't imagine that game is going to be doing them any favors. So let's pull up the champions that are not going to be seeing uh, the Rift in this next game. Now, one of the things I do want to pull out is Blue Otter, the Lux Alistair combo that they've been able to do in the past. The Alistair locks down champions, the Lux blows them up. This is not something that Blue Otter are going to be able to do again, so it's uh, one of the bullets out of the chamber. That is true, and it does open up. I feel as though the Azir coming through from messages is always a major character that you have to pay attention to in these long, fearless best of five drafts because. You're going to see it on both sides of the rift at some point, probably. But now, Lit Esports, interestingly, have chosen to play on the red side of the draft, and that will give them very different opportunities to go for some of these picks. It looks as though they are valuing the counter pick a lot more than trying to dictate how the draft actually starts. Be interested in seeing how the draft develops as we get deeper and deeper into this. Uh, I'm very curious as to when we're going to see Ari picked up because I feel like that's a very good champion going into Blue Otter if uh, Messages is able to grab that. It's also a champion that Messages has found uh, quite a bit of success with in the promotion tournament. In every game that he's played it so far in this promotion tournament, he's able to win. But uh, the thing I find most important is it allows for creative angles against Blue Otter when they're looking for neutral setups. And again, Blue Otter, those neutral setups is where they start to have some blunders. So teams have been able to exploit that in the past. So I would like to see champions that at least pressure some uh, more creative angles against Blue Otter. Deathstrike, should I make you really unhappy for a moment? What? So you remember how in those old champion select when we actually would use like the Riot champion select, how it would have a different font for the yeah. character names on both sides? Look at our player names. No! <laughs> no! Sorry, Cynthia. As Why soon as I noticed, I'm like, ah, oh, no. Because right. I'm going to suffer, everybody else needs to as well. But what? we see at least four Barksmen already taken off the table. One of them a jungler. Look. Misery loves company, Desirex. This is why, this is my way of just making your day just a little bit worse. Uh, okay, I'm gonna try and move on from that because I don't wanna see it anymore. Now it's Blue Otter's turn to be one the Talia. Happy to grab that. As I'm taking a look at some of the other bands that have come out, I do notice Kindred is uh, one that uh, both Music and Kizno have been able to play. Music did have a little bit of a reputation on it back in summer when he was on Supernova. Uh, so we'll see what actually does pair up with this Talia. Usually when you see a Talia, you want to see something aggressive to uh, take the fight to them, like a Vi, for example. Yeah, and it is still available here for Blue Otter as the Huey is going to be the answer coming in for Lit Esports. Message is going to try and take that one. And that's another character that we know is going to be on the radar for Blue Otter later on in this series. It is something that Semikin has played up quite a bit. And instead of using the Volley Bear now, Lit Esports is going to be choosing to grab the Wukong, which is a little bit interesting because you're expecting something like a Xin Zhao or a Vi as the characters very likely to come out here for Blue Otter. And instead, as we see different 
being cycled through for Blue Otter. It doesn't look as though they're necessarily going to be trying to react to that. They do have some opportunities to just out brawl the Wukong really yeah. aggressively in this early game. And that's the uh, angle that Music is going to take here. He's going to go onto the Lee Sin and just try and take over a lot of this early game. Uh, when Music is able to pair up with this Talia, with Samikin, is I feel like when we're going to see Blue Otter start to spike up. So we need to see a response in the draft from Lady Sports. There's a lot of pressure also getting put on this draft right now as both of these AD carriers are going to take one of their Zarya's and one of their Jinx games into this game right now. Remember, they can only do it once per series, and this is going to be one of the most pivotal characters in the entire series. This is Lit once again throwing out another character that you really need to win on. Jinx is a yes. character that you have so many tools you can set up for extremely well. You have some some burst coming out from your mid-jungle duo, but I really want to see a little bit more. That means that Dragoon needs to kind of play something that will do a lot of damage up front in order to allow Rock Boom to take off. And you know what would? Darius. You know what Blue Otter just banned? Darius. So Weird how that not works. Not going to have that. Yeah. It's kind uh, of Lydia Sports. Oh, go ahead. I was going to say, it's kind of crazy how, you know, you prevent your opponents from making the good decisions. Yeah, prevent them from playing, you know, some of their favorite champions on top of that as well. Uh, for Lady Esports, though, I do like how their draft is shaping up so far in this first round. Because whenever I see a Jinx, all, all I'm thinking is, like, how do we get the first kill for this Jinx? How do we get the resets going? Wukong is very disruptive in a lot of these team fights, and Huey has a lot of utility that he can really uh, utilize, whether it be the long range assassinations or just uh, getting a lot of AoE into these neutral fights. So I do like the setup for the Jinx for Lady Sports. Yeah, we'll see how the rest of it comes through because there's a lot of tools, right? Blue Otter is definitely looking to be just, just be going for a brawl, and they take away the Darius as well as the Mordekaiser from this one. So Dragoon not going to be playing on some of his classic champions that we're used to seeing him on. Instead, going to have to push him towards something else, and that means I'm expecting a support to come out here for Plux in the next couple of moments, but that does give a different this, kind of counter pick to the bottom side. Th this does leave the Rumble open. It was banned in Game 1. And it's a champion that Lawrence has been very good with. It's not the most team fighty comp this time if Blue Otter want to take that rumble. So uh, we'll see if that gets taken up. Right now for Lady Sports, they're happy to grab their support. They're up that Jinx with the Thresh. Yeah, I mean, the Thresh kind of all around good. Please don't pick this one, but you know, I guess at some point it does have to make a resurgence. It is still a position where if you look at the rest of Lit, they are, they have some, some burst, right? It's not, a series where they have absolutely nothing that they can do to get things started, but there's a lot of tankiness on the brow. There's a lot of deceptive tankiness coming through from Lee Sin because he's a lot harder to take down than he would initially appear to be. And Lit Esports, I really am curious what it is that they're going to be trying to finish out this series with, or at least this uh, draft with in order to create a lot of pressure because as this rumble comes through this. that's a lot of pressure potentially coming through on the okay. side of blue otter and this rex another character who is a lot harder to take down than you would initially expect uh this does give the counter pick over towards lady sports seeing the rex and we we were talking before the game about some of the uh picks that work really well into the rex between the champion pulls of these two players i think nar would be the most prominent pick uh if we see it come through yeah I mean, it's a lot of range champions that are good, and the Nasus, no, it is going to be the Gwen. Gwen oh. is able to brawl fairly effectively with the Rek'Sai, and it also creates a lot of pressure going up against the Talia Zeri, who is most of this team's damage. So this is another opportunity. One of the things that we looked at the last time that Lit Esports was in this promotion tournament was the fact that Gwen, or rather Dragoon, was popping off across the entire event. He got so yeah. many clutch kills, so many clutch opportunities, and this Gwen is another opportunity where he needs to be really clutch, but he's going to struggle a little bit early on in the game just because Lawrence has so much more sustain than he does in the Rek'Sai. It's so frustrating. No matter what you do to the Rek'Sai, the Rek'Sai is just chilling. She's like, all right, it's my it's vacation. Good. I'm going to sip my margarita and continue enjoying my top lane. And Lawrence hasn't been too bad at utilizing the Rek'Sai more than just being a uh, unburrow bot who looks for knockups. Lawrence has been pretty good at uh, putting a lot of presence onto the back line. So Rock Boom is going to have to be careful because if any of those uh, missiles are able to land, that is going to be the Void Queen looking to take apart the Jinx as we hit the Rift for the second time. And looking at this draft once again, one of the things that I'm looking at from the side of Lit is they don't have... 
like they have a point and click fear uh coming out from the side of Hui, but other than that there's not a lot of guaranteed crowd control like you have the hook which is a skill shot you do have the knock up from wukong which is a big area that you're going to be having on a lot of different targets but it's not necessarily always going to be hitting the targets that you want when you need them to and so when i look at this lit esports composition I think the biggest strength that they are going to be having is going to be this Gwen, just because it is a character where you have the ability to neutralize a lot of damage and then allow Rock Loom and Messages to build up the damage over time, which is not the way you usually see Jinx play. For Blue Otter, music is on Lee Sin. Lee Sin has a lot of presence in the early to mid game. There's a lot of damage on top of that. Last time he played Lee Sin, he kind of dominated the game very, very early on, was able to get a lot of kills. One of the problems we had with uh, Music when he was doing that was he didn't really share the gold. By the time he fell off, it was just burst down the Lee Sin and the rest of Blue Otter can't really do too much. So that's what I want to see different from Music this time is how much is he going to interact with Samikin and how much is he going to look to uh, get his lanes ahead uh, as well as himself. Yeah. Yeah, Music has been an interesting uh, character to watch over the past couple of years because you were noting that he got a lot of his team's wins when he was playing the Kindred in the past. But of course, you only get one of those games, and Blue Otter has been banning it rather aggressively going up against Kizno because he's also one of Kizno's best characters. And looking across at this entire series, one of the things that I'll be looking at is how Music and Kizno, now that they aren't in a situation where their sidelines are kind of collapsing, going into some of the stronger teams in the Challengers League, this is their opportunity to try and make some of these early game plans. But as we saw from game one, there was not an early game plan. Um, the plan was don't die. And uh, unfortunately, Woo! only one of them failed it. It's fortunately, yeah. unfortunately, it's a little bit of a 50-50 nonetheless. Cleaning up his bottom side at the moment is going to be Music. It's at the same time that Plux is putting a ward down there. So Music will at least gang. make his presence felt because the uh, wave is getting shoved pretty hard. This is still a tough gank though, especially for Lee Sin. You're just going to have to W to something and Rovix flash W? Oh, yeah, Rovix goes in. That's a nice flay from Plux. Sonic Wave does not land, so Flash is going to be burnt for nothing as well as the Ghost. All right, uh, Kizno is going to be pretty far ahead in his jungle tempo as Music does just run into the bottom lane. And, you know, they went for something. They do end up getting Rock Boom's Flash traded out for Rovex's. So that is a that is a plus. But Music now going to be really far behind some of the tempo. And that creates a lot of danger for Samikin, actually, because he's going to be in a situation where Kizno can come try and gank him after doing the crabs. That's why Music straight back to the jungle need to make up for a lot of this lost time. Uh, the respawn of his bottom camps is where I want to see Music start to make some plays because Rock Boom and Plux are going to be constantly pushing. No flash on this Jinx. He spent a lot of time down there. He lost a lot of tempo. You got to make up for it and take this Jinx down as fight breaks out between Dragoon and Lawrence, but uh, just a little bit of child's play. We also saw a bit of a gank happening towards the bottom side of the map as Kizno goes down there to say hello as both mid lanes will be backing away. And ultimately, it does look as though Music will not end up losing out on too much. He's about a camp behind where his jungle opponent actually is. And now Music goes right on back towards the high value camp of the Raptors. And Kizno, with his mid lane still sticking around, might actually be looking for a gank mid lane. Oh, he's going to go for the steal of the Raptors. First up, Smite Kizno. Music, he'll be able to secure it. Now Kizno is still in here, and he's far too deep. Seismic Shove comes out, Kizno has to burn his flash to get out. Yeah, don't know about that one. That was uh, definitely a spot where the mid lane for Blue Water could rotate faster. That was a flash that you did not need to expend as Rock Boom gets caught. Oh. And that's Lynx for you. He will flash on you. He'll look to take you down. Rock Boom does have the fancy feet, but now this puts Lynx in a very, very bad angle. Hook comes out from Plux. It does not find its mark. Looking to snipe his messages. Doesn't grab another hit. Rovex will have to hop out. And Blue Samikin? Otter are just barely to escape with their lives. Could not be done. Samikin is looking very aggressively. Oster's up on that side, but... Doesn't have an angle to go for it. Just yet. Recalls now coming out from Lid Esports. And Sammy Kane will return to lane. Rovex just trying to be a menace. And boy, is he. Oh. But now he's going to get feared for it. He's going to get punished for it. Oh, not going to cost him too much. All right. 
I mean, lots of fighting, lots of nothing overall. It does mean that neither side will be getting or losing a whole lot. There is some trade as we are seeing messages lose out on quite a bit of mid lane experience. We see that he's already down about a wave and a half in this game. He will recover a lot of it as he does clean all of this up, but it gives a lot of freedom to Samikin to move on the map a little bit more, and it all started off on Kizno just going for that jungle invade. Those Raptors losing him to Flash does end up putting them in a really awkward situation where they are going to be late for the grubs. And it kind of evens out the early jungle where we had Music spending a lot of time in the bot lane because Kizno kind of blunders that bot lane. You see that Music has been able to catch up in the CS, and we'll be able to grab the Void Grubs, three of them, going the way of Blue Otter. Yeah, and the early Void Grubs have so much experience baked into them, and Music will be able to have a lot of opportunity to try and find a bit of a catch-up. He will be getting towards the Wolves again and getting another cycle on the camps. One of the other things that we are going to be looking at is up in the top side, we are seeing that Dragoon is getting the better of Lawrence, as Lawrence has not been able to necessarily use the sustain advantage to go for the positive trades, and instead it's going to be Lawrence moving towards the mid lane to try and find his way onto Messages. Reaver's wall, Lawrence shows up, gets the knock up onto Messages. Messages still has his flash, but he's pushed back thanks to Seismic Shove. Has to go towards Kizno in the river, will be his protection. And that is the ultimate and the flash coming out from Messages, trying to find a potential 2v2. And it does cause Lawrence's flash, but Ultimately, training for the flash of the opposing mid laner does give you some opportunities to prey on him a little bit later. So still, nothing just quite happening, but we are seeing ideas from both sides of the rift. We are seeing them go for things, but it's not necessarily working out just quite yet. Neither of them able to find that first crucial blow, but it is going to be lit. We're going to be picking up the dragon. A little bit sneaky right now is Kizno. He has priority over in the bottom lane. Same thing with uh, messages getting freed out. So Lit calling all their members over. Music gets hit. That sentence will not send him to the grave. Rovex posturing forward, and you have Samikin on the opposite side, level seven. Oh, Ooh, they want to fight this, and Blue Otter will be able to get the seal of the dragon. Lynx starts peppering into Rock Boom. Rock Boom's able to get excited, but instantly cleave down. Over the wall comes Lynx, and he'll be chased. Blue Otter will find three for one. It's a disaster for Lit Esports. Three kills going over to Blue Otter. Two of them getting picked up by Lynx, who was a major part of the game last time around. The fact that Rock Boom loses off the Chompers right away. And Kizno, there seems to be a very unclear idea. They're trying to play to finish, but they just die instantly. And that's an easy smite coming through for Music. And even though he does die, like you said, Rock Boom, nowhere to go after the first one. So many plays back and forth. Jinx excited. Pog. Jinx excited with 10 health. Goodbye. Goodbye. And Lynx, that's the aggression. It is raw. It is 2-0-1 very early on for this Zeri. And this is where things might start to crumble for Lady Sports. They're not getting the Jinx going. They're not getting things going at all. I mean, they did get one kill, but it is still going to be a big gold lead coming out for the side of Lynx. And we've already touched a little bit on how many problems Lip might have is Plux. Stun lands onto Plux, but Kizno is nearby. With the death sentence chained on to Rovex, Kizno might fancy himself a fight. This mount from Rovex gives enough room and both junglers presence in the bot. Yeah, if that Q from Music lands onto Rock Boom, that's probably a full on 3v3 from both sides of the Rift, but Rock Boom is able to dodge out on it. And now Music Spotted. and Kizno both sticking around and they do spot the monkey. Uh, channeling the recall now. Music is still gonna lie in wait. Sonic Wave over the wall, potentially not gonna reveal himself just yet. Mm. They're waiting for Kizno. They know he's here. They saw him Sam on the forward. And now Kizno gets caught out. Here comes Rovex finds the back line. Samikin has arrived and Blue Otter. They pull the trigger on the play and they will make Lady Sports pay. Oh man. Such great play coming through. We see that Samikin was trying to cheat his way down from mid lane that entire time. A massive difference maker in this last fight. And now Blue Otter finding themselves even more kills. That's three now picked up by Lynx. They will create even more pressure. Lit's bottom lane will fall even further behind in experience. And Dragoon, the only player who's doing well on this roster. He's got 30 CS in advantage, but he did use the ultimate and not able to take Lawrence down. 
Sammy Ken duking it out. Oh! <laughs> Rock boom! From the bot lane will land a super mega death rocket. He needs that gold so badly as we see so much pressure being put on the bottom lane structure. That, that's going to be more plates going over. Lynx is getting further and further ahead. And Kizno will at least equalize on the grub. So no grub again today, but it is still a huge problem for the side of Blue Otter that Rock Boom is struggling to find its way into the game. And Lynx, uh, Lynx, Lynx. Lynx. <laughs> Lynx, oh God. Oh God. I just want to, I kind of want to marinate on that one for a little bit. But now I will move past it as Lynx currently 3 0 and 2. As you can see, he was able to get his next purchase. Uh, will be a static shiv, so we'll have a lot of push down in this bottom lane. Yeah, it creates a lot of pressure across the rest of the game as well. Just a, a little bit of extra ambient damage. But now, one of the things that I'll be looking for is... I feel as though Samikin has been doing a better job this series in roaming at the right time. And that's something that we talked about a no. bit. Here we go. It's time for the Lunks. Woo. Here he goes. He's going after Rock Boom. Rock Boom! Got nowhere to go, brother! You dead! Same thing with Plugs. It's a double kill, and this bot lane just does not stop me. That was oh, Josh. <laughs> that was largely a one v two, right? Rodex comes in, doesn't even need to ult, doesn't use any summoner spells, and Ro uh, Rock Boom just dies when Link splashes forward. That'll be this entire bottom lane structure. That'll be all five plates getting picked up by Links at this Jeez. point. That is so much extra gold going into the Blue Otter AD carry and really going to show why it was a bit of a sad moment for us when we found out that Links was not going to be playing. He is up yeah. 2,000 gold on everybody in the game. Man is a monster right now. He just took a recall and got a static shiv. Now he's taking another, almost done with his secondary item after he grabbed that uh, turret all by himself. That was first brick of the game as well. Look at that goal, Josh. So much extra money coming through. And I mean, to their credit, Rock Game is actually doing totally fine. But if we take a look at the experience as well, you are seeing that Rock Boom starting to fall behind pretty significantly in terms of the experience game going up against yeah. uh, Lynx. And it does give a lot of tools over to Lynx. The basic growth on AD carries is still pretty high and now it is going to be Blue Otter once again setting up for this dragon before Lit is ready to go. Multiple members from Lit Esports are just now coming out of base. Ah, uh, the crab! Yeah. The crab's still there. there we go. Sonic Wave. I'll finish it off. And now the uh, dragon getting taken by Blue Otter music. Starting that one up. Oh, and man. this is going to be a, a tough cookie for Lit Esports to uh, crack and come back from. Yeah. If you are able to take down Lynx, that's a lot of the economy of Blue Otter off the map at the very least. But the tricky part is actually getting there. Kizno is the only one who has uh, angles, who has the kit, who can actually get onto the Zeri. But even then, Zeri is very, very good at providing space for herself. You have Rovex for the protection. So this is boating very, very well for Blue Otter as another seismic shove. It lands onto Kizno. Oh, the monkey's not geez. looking too well. Blinks is not stopped anytime soon he's put into the box he wants rock boom can't finish off the kill to shut down for messages that's a lot of money in the right spot dracoon not able to take down lawrence though even though he's down a lot of cs lawrence still able to dance around the gwen the legs finally going a bit too aggressive gets caught by the death sentence oh samikin oh it's silly putting up the thumbs up after filling that sonic way following the dragon's rage style points for music and another death for Plux. This is a problem for Blue Otter. They have multiple members who are fully ready to carry this game, whereas Lit Esports, yes, they got a little bit more money. Good flash. Oh, Samikin has to flash away. Kizno looking for the chase, but there is the Weaver's Wall, and Samikin is out. Wow. Yeah, Samikin and Lynx just playing this so much better than their counterparts so far. Messages going down creates a lot of problems and Blue Otter, they're now able to start looking towards the top side, creating pressure on Dracoon so that he's not able to create uh, any opportunities either. He was up 30 CS before, it's now dwindled down to only about 20, but that does mean that this Rek'Sai is still going to be useful because it's so hard to kill. Gizno's looking for an angle in, Lynx wants to deny it. Lynx, I know you're fed, but you can't be the sole front line for Blue Otter right now as much as you want to be. Oh. In. Here comes Rovex. There's the true front line. Able to grab three members of Lady Esports. 
Teleport comes through. Sonic Wave and Milano Kizno jumping forward. It's going to be Music. Doesn't use the Dragon's Rage. Knows it's the clone. And Music knows it's time to throw down. And we'll chase two members of Lady Sports to their grave. This is looking pretty pretty similar to the first game here overall, Desirex. It might be a fast one at this point with Blue Otter dismantling Lit Esports once again. I had expected that Lit Esports was going to put up a decent fight in this series, but so far they have not been able to find their way in at all. The early game's not going in their favor, and now Dragoon, the last hope once again for Lit Esports. He did it last year. Can he do it again? Now that is uh, a lot to ask from him, Josh. As though the top lane may be going all right, all well, he's on a uh, vacation, you know, he's in the Bahamas at the moment. He's returning back to what looks like 2019 COVID. Everything is going wrong yep. down south of where he is at the moment, and he will have to put on the big carry shoes if Lit want a chance of coming back. Yeah, but it's such an island at this point. You know, Dragoon is up a little bit, but it doesn't really matter. You know, I feel like this is the quintessential top lane experience, right? Both sides of the map, it's 0 0, zero. Here comes the play. All right, Lit gonna put all the resources onto this top side. Flux does have the play, so Lawrence should be going down unless Lawrence tries to turn it around. Goes after Rock Boom. Lawrence is still up. He's bought enough time for Blue Otter to arrive, but not enough for them to fight. Sammy can. He's trying to decide if he wants to go mid lane or if he wants to help out the top side. The rest of his team says, nah, dude, it's okay. We got this. We're hanging out. You can just go towards the mid lane. Find another objective <laughs> as well. We're just going to create so much pressure with three of our members and just try to slow them down. They can't rotate. They can't back away. All five members are just now yeah. starting to get their recalls off. Most disrespectful stun from Rovex as the rest of Blue Otter corral oh, around Lit and lock them up to their demise. Lynx goes mental, takes down four, has a quadra kill, and there's only one more standing in his way between greatness as messages get taken down. It's a penta kill for Lynx. Eric, I don't know what more we could be asking for from Blue Honor at this point. A pentakill comes through, they get that top lane, they even get that fight in a 3v5 and some drifting from music at the same time. Everything you could possibly be asking for is going right for Blue Honor all at once. The Twitch chat is in full force and now when you get this Rift all to crash a second time, they have a dragon spawning in 20 seconds and Blue Honor has an everything you could possibly ask for. 12 kills on Lynx at only 18 minutes into the game. When Blue Otter, Otter are behind, Rovex's engages can look kind of weird, but when they're ahead, they look godly, Josh. And that is what we saw right there. The Magnet Storm of Rovex set this up beautifully for Lynx. Yeah, as soon as we see music get caught a little bit, it's all Rovex catching all five members knocking them up and that just means that Lynx is getting so much damage across the entire team getting those piercing shots off of that Q every single time and then Sammy can already taken down the mid lane turret now he's here to make sure that messages goes down as well they make sure to give it over to Lynx who does you know fall down to the turret but that is okay you get so much money on him he's already three items at 19 minutes into the game he's gonna be taking over and they're gonna be picking up another dragon for themselves at the same time and I, I want to state this one more time. If this was round two in the upper bracket, I fully think Lady Esports take this. I believe this this lower bracket, Blue Otter have bathed in the blood of their enemies. They fought some of the toughest comebacks they could. And it's resulted in this team looking better with every single series they performed in. And now in the most crucial one, in the second qualifier of the promotion tournament, they're ready to take us to game point. They're going to do it very shortly at this point. Uh, Rock Boom, you know, you normally look at the Jinx at two items when the character starts to wake up. He, he might get there, but the problem is everybody on the other side will already be past the point where you're expecting them to be when Jinx is supposed to start doing a lot of damage. That's just not going to be a relevant consideration as Link's solo traversing the top side of the map because he knows how safe he is. He has enough vision. He's able to pick up this red buff and create pressure for the rest of his team. The only thing that Blue Otter really needs to wait for is for the Baron to spawn, and that happens in a couple seconds. Right now, Blue Otter setting up towards the top end of the map, cutting off the rest of Lid Esports from being able to rotate around in their own jungle. Aaron currently on the map. For the time, Blue Otter will just clean up the rest of the camps of Lid Esports. 
800 shy of a 10k gold lead. We still got three minutes and 45 seconds before Dragon Soul comes up. So, so many different things for Blue Otter to play around. Yeah. I, if I'm Blue Otter, I'm calling like, yeah, let's just start hitting the Baron, right? This is something that, you know, Parks and Co. and Asher, they love doing this at 20 minutes. Like, yeah, the Baron spawns. Let's go hit it. We are so far ahead. And who would expect us to be hitting the Baron at only 20 minutes? Well, and it's time to go in. Time to start ending the game relatively quickly. And Blue Otter seem to be of the same mind. They're sending everybody right on over. They have enough vision. They can see that people are not coming through. It's just a matter of time before they decide, yeah, we need to get lit out of their base by actually pulling this monster. Lit now starting to contest some of this fog of war that Blue Otter have put in their jungle. Messages. Walks around with his... No, you have Dragoon in the bottom lane all the meanwhile looking for the split push. Blue Otter have started up the Baron and they have plenty of defense to stop Lit from contesting. It's so tough. Rovex still on the side. And he can take a bit of damage, but Lynx and Music still Rovex. just wailing away. Rovex is there. They finally spotted out Rovex. They begin to turn in that direction. Teleport's now being channeled. Lawrence will be able to arrive. 2k health remains. Will he be able to steal it? No! It is secured by Music. And now the fight taken. Blue Otter going towards Lit. Kizno runs low. Lawrence runs out. Kizno is able to survive. Lynx jumps in. Half his health remains. Rockboom's filling the momentum. He's looking to get excited. Gets kicked away by Music. And Rovex will pull him right back in to the grasp of Lynx. Three down. And Blue Otter take another fight. You have to respect it for Rockboom. It's their only way into the game. He has to do something absolutely nuts. Not able to do it. And Blue Otter end up not losing a single member. But several members blinking red as the lit esports space will be opening up once again. Blue Otter tried to end this one in record time. Top lane turret. Inner goes down. Inhibitor tested in the bottom lane. And a 13k nearly 14k lead at 22 minutes for blue otter it just doesn't feel as though these teams are on the same level at all and it does feel as though lit has kind of fallen apart in a lot of ways now as the baron goes over we get to see that you know lawrence he hasn't done a whole lot this game but he ends up just surviving here and you look at rock Boom trying to find the opportunity to hit the right targets he gets several members super low but then Music goes in, <gasps> flash kick, alley up into Robex, and that just means that there is no more damage left on the side of Lit. Rock Boom was so close to getting to where he needed to be, just wanted to get excited, get the resets going. But every single time he steps up, there's always someone from Blue Otter to shut him down. Now Blue Otter concentrating onto this bot lane inner. Not long for this world does get cleaved down. The Otters will siege up on the base. Goon might get a turret, the first turret for late esports on the far side of the map, but who cares as the rest of the base is just opening up. Woohoo, we get an objective bounty, but the bottom lane inhibitor turret is opening up. The mid lane inhibitor is dying as well to the Rally Cry Baron buff and Blue Otter. I mean, they're so tanky. You see that there's not a lot of damage coming out of messages whatsoever. Oh. And music, I'm a little bit surprised he didn't just take that. That's an inhibitor down with the siege. Now focused into the bottom lane. All the meanwhile, a fight breaking out in the top side as Samikin and Dragoon duke it out. Another inhibitor taken. Blue Otter moments away from getting to match point as the defense comes in from Lit Esports. They've called in plucks, they've called in messages. And Blue Otter will not be able to close out just yet. Not quite yet. A little cautious play from Blue Otter, wanting to make sure they don't mess anything up. Dragoon is able to get away, and Samikin does have to use the flash, but it is going to be another dragon, and the Chemtech Soul picked up from the side of Blue Otter in just a moment, and it's tough. Like, I, I don't really know what you're supposed to do from this position as Lit Esports, other than try and figure out what you're going to be playing in the game that will determine if you stay in the Challengers League. Oh, Lynx! right in front of Dragoon, sets up a bait push by himself. That is how bad the situation is right now for Lit Esports, where even your side laners have no chance in hell against any member of Blue Otter. Now with the Dragon Soul, they're looking to end. How quickly are they gonna do it? Does look as though the trap is late top. Oh no! Oh, Savikin! The man with the perfect seismic shove. No traps. Or Lady Esports 
will go right. Teleport now channeled out, and Kizno's on the wrong side of town. Yeah, they know exactly where he is. It's a matter of... Ah, ha, ha. Uh, uh, ha, ha. Am I the real one? Ah, no. No. Monkey's trying to get away. No Good. monkey business. Lynx goes on a killing spree. And Blue Otter are looking for the end over on the top side. Fox comes up. Seismic shove on the rock. Boom. Lawrence positions forward. Wanted the knock up on the rock. Boom. But did not get close enough in time. A little bit of sniping coming out from messages. And Lit so far able to defend, but supers are piling in. Yeah, it's a very tough position to be in because everything is going to be crashing onto your side of the map. Now, the longer this goes, the better it'll get for Lit Esports, but the inhibitor turrets will be falling. That'll be super units in every single lane. Oh, man. And another seismic shove from Samikin. And Flux is dead. Rock Boom might be following soon. Lawrence doesn't get the knockup. Cyclone comes out. Kizno's looking for an angle. Rock Boom still getting the autos. Looking to get the reset. Found it. Excited. Now chasing down members of Blue Otter. But can't get close enough to Lawrence. It's enough to kick Woo. Blue Otter out of the base. But it's not enough to fight them. Because they'll take it. They'll run it straight towards you. Rock Booms get sent towards the skies. And taken down by the Void Queen. And finding it. Blue Otter. They want to get into NACL. And they're only one more win away. It's crazy, Eric. It is absolutely wild how dominant this performance has been from Blue Otters so far. That is two oh, games geez. where they just blow everything open. There's not a lot that Lit has really shown us to give us a reason to think that Game 3 will be any different at this point. They moved to the red side, they tried to get some counter picks, and it did not matter. Now, with the Jinx off the table, they've lost even more of their tools of a lot of these must-win champions, and when you lose them all in your first two games that you lose, there's not a lot of avenue back into the series. Oh. Oh, and it leaves a lot left on the table for Blue Otter to play with as they've worked around some of these more quirkier compositions. It's working out, man. They're looking absolutely tremendous. They're playing with such confidence. As I said, this lower bracket run, taking out both Mirage, Winthrop, getting the revenge there, and now just one more away. One more win away. And they make it to the NACL. We'll be right back as we set up for game three. Introducing the new Footlong Sidekicks at Subway. Try the warm and delicious Footlong Cookie, Footlong Pretzel, or Footlong Churro. I mean, all I'm going to say is, like, I'm 100% winning in the promotion tournament. That's, like, where I shine the, the most. I was expecting to do a lot better than ninth place. We didn't really click very well towards like the middle of the season. We kind of got in our own heads a little bit. And that kind of showed in our games. Our team always said like, oh, we're we're not a scrim team, we're a stage team. So as soon as we lost that first match, it was like a reality check. Obviously, it didn't go well. No one would say that our season went well. Individually, I had pretty solid performances, more toward the first half than the second half. A lot of us are pretty happy with the way the roster has ended up for this promotion tournament and we picked up more pieces that we're more confident in and that are binding as players better together uh there's not as much conflict as there was so i think the only result that can happen is that we're gonna promote again well my last run in the promotion tournament was awesome we were like the big underdogs who came up beat all the best teams and promoted so that was really awesome honestly like i just want to live that moment again because that was probably one of the best moments like in my career just winning that promotion tournament we only need to win two best of fives to keep ourselves alive and i'm pretty confident about that i'm not gonna lie even though we're relegating this time around and start promoting we're not nervous or anything i'm like pretty confident like the level of play it's not insanely high and i think that we can get to a point where we're pretty safe it's a stressful environment but we've you're used to that kind of environment. We've been there before. Some of us, we've already promoted before. So if we've done it once, why can't we do it again? While some of the other teams, they haven't really been in uh, these high tense situations. For example, I'd say like CCG have a lot of newer players. And I think maybe maybe the nerves might get to them. Maybe they won't. But, you know, it's something to think about at least. We didn't watch any of the games, but we did scrim three out of the four teams in qualifiers right now. I haven't really watched it too much. 
not gonna lie like if if at all as long as i am focused on myself and going into game and i'm confident like it doesn't really matter who my opponent is i'm confident i'll beat them i have watched the qualifiers i've seen what everybody's capable of i've seen how teams have grown i don't know whether to be thankful or or to be disappointed because I I would be sweating if I had to play against Yujin. I'd be getting my handkerchief out and wiping sweat off my forehead if I had to play against that guy. I don't want to beat Winthrop. We have like a 0% win rate against them. I, I became pretty close with them during the time I was in NACL. So like I banter with a lot of their teammates. What do you think about Yukino over on CCG? I mean, he's a, he's a good player though. But he eagles too much. Yukino, I'm gapping you, bro. You better watch out. Crimson has gotten a lot better over the past two to three years. He has grown a lot in top lane. Like, he's a formidable player now. And, in fact, I would expect to see him in an ACL pretty soon. All the bot lanes are actually pretty good. So, I'm excited to play against all of them. I love Shogo. I'm excited to play against him. Lynx and Instinct. And Mobility is really good, too. So, I'm just excited to take them all down. We all have different goals. But I know me and Malkman especially are trying our hardest because we want to get into LCS. In order to do that, we kind of have to keep our position in NACL and not relegate. So just trying our hardest to just perform and showcase our skill again for next split. I think we're keeping our spot because we are the better players. <laughs> as robotic of an answer as that was, it's uh, it's just the truth. To be honest, the end of the season was pretty rough for us. We took a week break and kind of just everyone just focused on themselves a little bit. We all kind of relaxed a little bit, focused on ourselves, got better overall. And then going into the next week of scrims, we started to do a lot better. So I'm excited to see how that continues with the rest of the week of scrims going into the promotion tournament. And a shout out to my teammates. I mean, we've, we've gone through a lot. Even if we relegate or don't relegate, it was fun, right? I guess. Have fun with all of you guys. I just want to say, don't count me out. Like, I'm coming. They just added Jinx into the meta. Hyperkyers are back. Like, it, it's over for you guys. Oh, I've been on losing teams more than, like, anyone else on in an ACL. You know, I was on Team Gates. I was on Phoenix 1. I was on Optic. I was on Immortals. I know how to keep strong mental.